Welcome to this poster presentation. I'm Luca Schmid and I will present our work on the neural enhancement of factor graph-based symbol detection. Now let's get right started with the problem formulation. The background is that we want to transmit a block of k complex transmission symbols through a channel which introduces inter-symbol interference as well as additive white Gaussian noise. And at the, at the receiver, our goal is to infer, given the channel output, we want to infer on the symbols. So basically, the symbol detection means we want to get this symbol-wise a posteriori probability, P from the symbol CK, given the complete observation Y. We can do this using the Bayes theorem and together with the assumption that we have independent and uniformly distributed symbols, we basically have here the channel likelihood function, which we need to marginalize towards each individual symbol, CK. And exactly this marginalization is the challenge here, since it can get quite computationally complex if the block length K is high or if our symbol constellation large, so the number of possible symbols m. The state of the art for this computation or for the symbol-wise detection is the BCJR algorithm, which has a complexity that grows linearly with k, so with the block length, but exponentially with l, and l is the number of interferers or for our channel the length of our channel impulse response, is l plus 1. And our idea is now to find a symbol detection algorithm with a lower complexity. And therefore, we want to use the framework of factor graphs together with message passing, in this case, belief propagation. Therefore, we need to find an appropriate factorization of this function, of this likelihood function. And the most um, straightforward way to do this is shown here. It's a so-called Forney observation model, which we basically just use the Markovian property of our channel. We have white Gaussian noise. So basically these, this factorization, which you can see here is given, and these exponential terms are basically the, is the, short, is the density of our normal distribution. And here you can see the, the interfering symbol C weighted with the channel impulse response H. And this factorization can be represented in a factor graph as shown here. The factors Q are given in these, with these factor nodes in red. And each factor node is connected to the variable nodes on which variable the respective factor depends. So in this case, each factor node is connected to L plus one uh, fact, uh, variable nodes. Now, this factor graph can be used to carry out this marginalization by applying the message passing, so the belief propagation on this graph in order to compute the symbol-wise a posteriori probability or in short, symbol-wise APP. The problem is now that this graph, as you can see, contains cycles, which leads to an iterative and especially to a suboptimal algorithm. So we only get an approximation of the symbol-wise APP. Further, the computational complexity is given here and it is not quite reduced in comparison to the, to the BCJ algorithm. We still have this exponential dependency on L. To reduce the complexity, we need to find an alternative factor graph. And this is given here with a change of the observation model. The so-called Ungerberg observation model is given if we not use the channel output directly for our inference, but instead we first apply a matched filter to the channel output. So H adjungated is applied to the channel output Y, and then we base our inference on this output of the matched filter X. This leads to an alternative factorization as given here and again, we can represent this factorization with this factor graph here. You can see that the structure is quite different here. We have factors which only depend on one variable node, here given with in orange, these F factors, and we have factors I 
which depend on pairs of variables here given by these blue squares. And the nice thing about this second factor graph structure is that the factor node degree is constant. As you can see, the factor have a degree or the factor nodes have a degree of one or a degree of two, since they only depend on one or two variables. In comparison, the Fourney observation model had a factor node degree which is dependent on L and which grows linearly with L. For the Ungerberg observation model, this nice property leads to a quite low complexity. As you can see here, we only grow linear with L, linearly with L. But of course, the model is also, or the graph is also cyclic, which means this UFG algorithm, which means applying the belief propagation on the cyclic factor graph is also suboptimal. And now the question arises, Okay, we have two different models. Both are suboptimal, but how suboptimal are they and are they differing in their, in their performance? And for this, we have a glimpse at a numerical evaluation. Here you can see the bit error rate for two different channels. And for now, we are just looking at the dotted curves, which are in, in red, the FFG algorithm is the belief propagation based on the Fauna observation model and the UFG is the observation uh, the algorithm based on this Ungerberg observation model. So for this first channel we can see that the Ungerberg model in green has a quasi optimum performance so we can't see any gap between the green performance from the Ungerberg model and the MAP performance which was implemented by the BCJR algorithm. On the other hand, the, the Fauna model in red shows a significant gap. It's not too large, but there is a significant gap. But as we can see, if we have a look at an alternative channel, here given with the channel impulse response, a quite short channel, we see that here the situation is completely different. Now the Ungerberg observation model in green performs really poorly. And the Fauna model again is near to optimality but has a gap. So what we can see from these first numerical evaluations is that the performance is quite channel dependent and the observation model is really important and matters in terms of the performance of the symbol detection. And this is also the motivation for our first contribution, which is shown here in the block four, which generalizes the observation model. We, are, we base this on the Ungerberg observation model since we want to keep this low complexity, but we generalize the matched filter into a generic pre-processing filter. So now we apply some generic pre-processing filter with an impulse response of length LP to our channel observation Y, and the resulting factorization, as you can see here, has the same structure as the Ungerberg model, but is dependent on the preprocessor P. So basically the factors F and I alter depending on P. We call this algorithm GFG and again apply standard belief propagation on this graph. A further advantage of this generalization is that by freely choosing the LP, so the length of our preprocessor, we will have a flexible trade-off between performance and complexity. Now let's have a look on this generalized model for this channel HB. You can see that by changing an appropriate preprocessor, we can already quite in improve the performance compared to the Ungerberg observation model. In this case, the preprocessor had a channel impulse response length of five, so we spend some complexity. In comparison, the matched filter of this Ungerberg model had a length of three. So yeah, we can already improve quite, quite a lot only by changing the observation model. But still, we need to close this gap from the blue curve here up to the MAP performance, which we want to reach. And therefore, we propose the second contribution here, which is the neural enhancement of the factor graphs. The rough idea is that we introduce some parameters within the messages and the uh, factor nodes 
which we then optimize in order to improve the overall performance. So what, where can we basically introduce parameters? At first we tackle the message passing. There we can individually weight each belief propagation message. The idea is that by appropriate damping of the messages, we might mitigate the effect of cycles. You remember that the only suboptimality or the suboptimality is only caused by these cycles in the factor graph and the idea is that by weighting the messages appropriately we might suppress this cyclic behavior. The second thing which we generalize is, the, is or are the factor nodes themselves. Here you can see the factors of the generalized observation model, F tilde and E tilde, and the purple factors are artificially included within these factors and will be optimized in the second step. And the motivation behind this is of course by in introducing more parameters we have an increased optimization space so we might find a better solution within this space but we can also bring some intuition into this because as you can see here the 1 over sigma square is basically the SNR. And from previous works on the topic, especially of the Ungerberg model, we know that the main problem with the Ungerberg model and its suboptimality is that the messages tend to overestimate the reliability. So basically, by dampening the SNR, by choosing a kappa or lambda smaller than one, we can feed our factor graph with a lower SM SNR as it actually, as the channel edge actually has, and thereby we can or hope to, to regularize the messages. Now we have these parameters. So again, the weights on the message passing, these multiplicative weights within the factor nodes, and as well, the filter tabs of our pre-processing filter. And all these parameters are now jointly optimized using gradient descent. And we optimize these parameters in an end-to-end -end manner. Therefore, we use the objective function, the bitwise mutual information. This is basically the true achievable rate if we apply um, bit interleaved coded modulation. So the idea is that instead of using the mutual information on symbol basis, which is not too realistic in an actual transmission system, we use a bit metric or assume a bit metric decoder, which converts the bitwise, uh, symbol-wise APPs into bitwise APPs. So basically we split up our, our channel of tra transmitted symbols into multiple parallel bitwise channels and the bitwise mutual information is now given as the sum of the mutual informations of these bitwise channels. Using this objective function and optimizing all the parameters we just said, we can now have a look at the results. Let's start with the channel HB where we st uh, stopped earlier. The dotted line was the curve of the generalized observation model without any neural enhancement. And now we have a look at the solid lines which show the improvements if we apply neural enhancement. And as you can see, we can nearly reach the optimum performance of MAP. Also, if we, if we have a look at the Ungerberg model, which was quite poor, we can also significantly improve. So this basically this neural enhancement works on different factor graphs. Also, for instance, for the channel HA, we can see that the Forney model in red can also be improved. It does not reach quite the optimum performance, but as you can see, quasi all curves can be improved in their performance. This brings us to the end. As a takeaway, just to summarize, we can mitigate the suboptimality of cyclic factor graphs and belief propagation by using quite simple generalizations on the factor nodes as well as on the message passing and thereby improve the performance quite drastically. And these techniques can be applied as I already said, to all kinds of cyclic factor graphs and are not only restricted to these factor graphs which we considered here for the symbol detection. 
problem. To give an outlook, we already um, pre-printed or pre-printed a follow-up paper on ArcSive. There we, we further investigated the Bungerberg model and the generalized observation model. We applied pruning techniques, so cutting out edges of the graph in order to further reduce the complexity, but also to see the behavior and we got some quite interesting results. And as a second step, we applied dynamic factor graph transition, which means that we similarly to this generalized observation model, we change the observation model, but we dynamically do this in each belief propagation iteration. And thereby we hope to make the messages of the belief propagation more independent since the graph is ev evolving over the belief propagation iterations. And as a long-term goal, of course, we want to combine the symbol detection with the channel decoding. Channel decoding can be done for linear codes with a tenor graph. And basically, we can just dock on this tenor graph with its variable nodes and its check nodes to this factor graph for symbol detection and do joint detection and decoding. And this is kind of the long-term goal if we are um, finished with all the examinations on the symbol detection itself. This is it. Thanks for watching and if you have any comments or questions, you can find me in the special session 8 of the SPORC 22 conference or just contact us via email if you um, can't attend the conference.